It was inevitable. Once you buy a new turntable, or any kind of audio system for that matter, it's bound to be followed by a string of tweaks and upgrades. So of course, a couple months after I bought my ProLinear DDS Mark II, I decided to take another dive into the money pit and get a new cartridge for it. Now, if you're familiar with the vinyl obsession, I mean, uh, community, you already know that choosing a phono cartridge isn't exactly a simple decision. Just like any hobby, everyone has their own opinion on which gear is the best, and if you ask a dozen vinyl enthusiasts what cartridge to get, you'll probably get at least a dozen different answers. Fortunately, I had an idea of what kind of cartridge I wanted. I really like the sound of my Negaoka MP110 on my Pioneer turntable, and I wanted to get a similar, reasonably priced unit that would give me great sound on my DDS Mark II. But I also wanted to try something different from the Nagahoka to hear what sound quality other manufacturers could offer. I was thinking of the Ortofon 2M Red, which gets excellent reviews, but I kept seeing Grado pop up in discussions around cartridge makers, and it piqued my curiosity. Now, there are several controversies about Grado in the vinyl community, not the least of which is how you're supposed to pronounce the name. Grado or Grado? Well, you'll notice I've been pronouncing it Grado, and that's mainly because it's the way that John Grado pronounces it. My name's John Grado, and I'm CEO, owner of Grado Labs. Come on, folks, if there's any authority on how the name should be pronounced, it's probably going to be with the family members themselves. Let's put this one to rest. A more relevant controversy is how well-made Grado cartridges are. In my research, I read several people's disdainful comments about how Grado cartridges are quality controlled by ear and not by a scientific frequency response analysis, about the lack of flatness in their sound signatures, and about several cartridges making their tone arms shake alarmingly in the group. However, for every bad review of a Grado cartridge, I found at least one or two who really liked them. In particular, the Grado Prestige Black and Grado Prestige Green have been called some of the best sounding budget cartridges available today. The Prestige series is made of six moving iron cartridges that are moderately priced, yet are intended to sound great. The series ranges from the black at the lowest price point to the gold, which is the highest priced and supposedly the best quality. The green is one step up from the black. In fact, it's built in exactly the same way. A Grado Green is simply a Grado Black cartridge that performs exceptionally well. According to Grado Labs, each new black cartridge is tested in the shop, and the top 15% are marked as greens. The same is done for the blue and red pair cartridges, and silver and gold cartridges in the series, just at higher price points. Fortunately, a Grado Green is only about $20 to $25 more than a black. So, when I saw a Grado Green on sale for just over a hundred dollars, I said to myself, dang it, life's too short to wring my hands over whether this one little doodad might not work properly. I'm gonna explore the unknown. So, I bravely clicked and ordered one. And a little later, I got my very own Grado Prestige Series Green, Revision 1. Apparently, Grado made some improvements to their Prestige cartridges a few years back, and I got the updated version. So, let's take a look at what the Grado Green offers you. The packaging here looks very nice and compact, but when you open it, it seems a little bit lacking compared to the protective plastic shell that my Negaoka MP110 came in. You can see that the cartridge is just placed loosely inside this thin plastic cylinder, with nothing except the instructions to keep it from sliding around. Fortunately, it wasn't damaged at all, but I think the packaging is something that should be improved. So, this is the unit itself. Simple, compact, and not very green. The only way you can tell it's a Grado green is by these two small green nubs on the stylus casing. I kind of like that minimal, understated design choice. It weighs about 6 grams and is designed to track at 1.5 grams. It also has an elliptical-shaped stylus that's supposedly specifically cut for Grado. 
and you can replace it using this plastic tool that I put on the turntable here. And of course it comes with a warranty registration card which you can mail back to Grado Labs' home base in beautiful Brooklyn. Okay, time to put this unit to use. Farewell, old piezo stylus cartridge. I didn't know your name, but you sounded decent, and I'm sure you gave years of musical service. It's time to find out how the Grado Green sounds. And whoa! Why is the turntable in a different place? Well, okay, you got me. After I set up the Grado, I took some time to listen to it and evaluate the sound of it. And during that time, I decided to get a better cabinet for my turntable instead of the table I was using before. I got this nice entertainment cabinet for about 30 bucks, and so far it works great. Anyway, now that it's all hooked up, let's hear how the Grado Prestige Green sounds. Well, it makes Rick Wakeman and Steve Howe sound pretty good. One of the first things I noticed when I dropped the Grado's needle was a much greater clarity and better channel separation in the signal. Remember how in my last video on the Pro Linear turntable, I said that the original cartridge on here sounded flat and distant? Well, when I put the Grado on here, I realized just how flat and distant the old cartridge really was. Compared to that old cartridge, the Grado Green made it sound like a layer of gauze had been lifted away from the sound of my records. Suddenly, parts of the music that had been muted on the old cartridge seemed to jump out at me much more vibrantly. It became obvious very quickly that the Grado Green is a winner when it comes to imaging, channel separation, and clarity. The Green reproduces all kinds of music in a way that's accurate, well balanced across the sound spectrum, and pleasing to the ears. This is the Grado sound that many people talk about. The Grado Green's frequency response isn't exactly flat, as I mentioned before, but it gives a warm, dynamic sound that feels very natural. I think Grado cartridges may be like Fostex headphones. They aren't neutral, but they do give a distinct sound signature that seems to feel right to a lot of people. One of the first things you may notice about the Grado is its robust bass range. This cartridge gives drums, basses, and other bass instruments a big, bold, deep sound that lets you feel the rhythm of your music. Drum hits are tight, sharp, and clear, and bass chords resonate like waves. But even though there's plenty of bass, the rest of the spectrum is never overwhelmed by it. The Grado Green brings out the mid-range beautifully, with vocals, guitars, pianos, and other instruments sounding prominent, lifelike, and very pleasing. On several records I've listened to, it seems like the singer or musicians are almost in the room. There's none of the thinness or distance that a few lower-budget cartridges have shown. The upper treble is also reproduced excellently. High notes are well-placed in the mix and add the right zest to the sound. Trumpets and cymbals really crackle with energy. As you probably guessed, the Grado Green's overall sound is excellent for a budget cartridge. It gives you a wide soundstage with very good channel separation. All the instruments and parts are well placed and sound very clear and true to life. Lows, mids, and highs all have precise attacks and decays, yet sound lucid and musical at the same time.
Whether it was rock, pop, jazz, folk, or any number of styles, the Grado Green brought my records to life with a vibrant sound that made me want to keep listening until the last notes. Even on classical recordings, it reproduced subtle nuances and soft details with great definition. People have said that the Great O' Green is a great all-around cartridge, and based on this, I think they're right. Now, I must say I was relieved when I first dropped the needle and realized that there was none of the dreaded Grado hum I'd heard so much about. Yes, this is one of the issues I saw mentioned many times in my research on Grado. Apparently, a few turntable owners have hooked up new Grados and found that their cartridges create an obnoxious hum in the signal, which they can't get rid of. This has made some people swear off Grado equipment forever. But fortunately, the hum hasn't come to me, and judging by reviews I saw before buying the Grado Green, most people don't get the hum either. The Grado hum seems to affect mostly Rega turntables because of the way their motors are placed close to the cartridge's path. But then again, it doesn't affect all Rega models either, so do some research first if you're a Rega owner who wants to buy a Grado. For most other turntables, I'd say the Grado Green probably won't cause you any trouble this way. This doesn't mean that the Grado Green is perfect. One flaw I've noticed is that the tracking isn't as reliable on inner grooves as other cartridges I've heard. The sound tends to become just a little sibilant and imprecise as the needle approaches the inside of the record. Closely related to this problem, I think, is that the cartridge also seems to have a slightly lower tolerance for flaws in a vinyl pressing than others. If a record has some sibilance in the pressing or has a particularly hot audio mix, the Grado Green will let you know it. Or the Nagaoka MP110 is more forgiving of flaws in a pressing and has little inner groove distortion, the Grado Green tends to ride rougher over them. But these minor flaws are very small compared to the overall quality of the Grado's performance. When properly set up, the Grado Green delivers detailed, lively sound in all areas of the sound spectrum. It makes records of just about any genre sound clear and enjoyable. It may not be a high-end cartridge, but the performance far exceeds what you might expect from a budget phono cartridge. If you've got a new turntable and you're looking for an affordable cartridge, I highly recommend getting a Grado Green or a Nagaoka MP110 depending on what's available and what's more affordable in your area. I'm sure you'll be impressed with how your records sound. So I'm happy to say that this setup has only improved so far. I hope I'll be able to enjoy the Great O' Green on my Pro Linear for some time to come, and I hope to see you soon for another review. Ciao!